Here's how the story begins. Jay and I got invited to DJI's latest launch over in New York. They released this product, the DJI Osmo Pocket. I'm a huge fan of portable mobile devices, so creating this video was a lot of fun. Oh, by the way, please excuse the audio. This isn't my typical setup, but I'm just using my iPhone as a voice recorder. But I have to admit, I think it does a pretty good job. This video was all shot on the Osmo Pocket at 4K 60 frames per second. Aside from the product shots, of course. Throughout this video, I'm going to dive a little into the specs, my favorite features, and some of my thoughts on this device as a creator. But for now, enjoy these cinema bars. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. We have two flights to catch. The first flight is to Phoenix and then from Phoenix to Hawaii. Oh my gosh, it's so small. Hey. Okay, let's see. <laughs> This is the new uh, DJI uh, Osmo Pocket. Dude, this is crazy. How is that? How is that even stable? Compared to like an iPhone or 4K60 on like this. Yeah. Diving into the functionalities of the camera. I enjoy how you can switch from photo to video with just a click of a button. However, I didn't find myself using the photo function at all. I think the true strength in this camera comes through the video to be honest. Here's the cool part. If you swipe over to the left, you'll get a couple options for your shooting preference. And if you swipe left again, you'll get another set of menus for that specific shooting mode. Scrolling down, we have photos, video, slow-mo, time-lapse, and panel mode. If you swipe right, you can preview the content you've created. Swiping down gives you the preferences, and you can also adjust the brightness of your device. Aside from shooting with this device on its own, you can attach it to your mobile phone with this adapter. Don't worry, if you're an Android user, DJI provides a micro USB adapter as well. So right now I'm recording myself at 4K 60 frames, uh, which is something I wouldn't be able to do with my phone camera because the front facing camera doesn't have 4K. So this is a pretty cool feature, just knowing that it attaches straight to my phone and I can get this content off of it. Now I'm going to dive into DJI software for a quick second. Starting from the top left, we have the stabilization button. It gives you the options as to how slow or fast you'll be walking. There are also three other different gimbal modes. Next up is your camera settings. You get the options for either shooting manual or auto. I always try to shoot in manual so that your exposure doesn't change up while you're recording. The third one is shooting resolutions. You don't have to shoot 4K, 1080 is just fine. It's just all your personal preference. The last option on your left gives you a couple more extra settings. Pro gives you more options and I suggest you dabble around just to see which one fits your style. Now on the top right, we have selfie mode and it switches back pretty quick. If you tap the option underneath it, it recenters your frame. Tapping on the bottom right gives you the preview option. And finally, there's a new story mode that DJI is implementing. I'm not going to get into super detail about this feature, but it pretty much gathers your clips and creates a video pre-edited for you. One of my favorite modes is time-lapse mode. 
If you tap the arrow on the top right, it'll drop this menu down where you could change the intervals, duration, and path. All I'm going to do is make a point here and here. You would need really expensive gear to recreate this shot on a larger camera, so I'm really impressed with the results of the pocket. Here's a little behind the scenes as to how I was able to achieve this shot. I usually have a bunch of gear that I could rig up to my phone, but I left it on New York. We're currently out in Hawaii right now, and I'm just working with what I got, also known as my shoe. All right, so right now I'm just doing a quick audio test just to see the sound quality of this versus my regular iPhone. Again, just to see the sound quality of this versus the Osmo Mobile. Which one sounds better? We're going to find out. Now I'm doing a quick quality test on the Osmo Pocket versus the iPhone XS. The biggest difference in my opinion is just stabilization versus handheld. When I zoomed in at 200%, the iPhone footage turned out a kind of bit more sharper, but it's the kind of sharpness that you don't typically want in your videos. As if I added plus 20 on clarity. Alright you guys, so we've made it to the very end of this video. It's currently day 4 or day 3 in Hawaii and it's been super busy and I've been working on this video during the after hours of the day pretty much having to wake up every morning around 5 or 6 o'clock to shoot sunrise or to have like morning activities and then having a full day with a full itinerary and then coming back to our hotel I've dedicated a couple of hours to editing this video for the past couple of days so it's been a real struggle but thank you guys for bearing um, with me and I was really excited about sharing this video because I personally love this new product I feel like it's very versatile when it comes to pocket stabilization I was just thinking about how I compared this to my iPhone setup and I would the ease of use of this thing is just literally pressing it or pulling it out, turning it on, and shooting. Versus using my iPhone, I would literally have to take my phone out, uh, plug it into my gimbal, balance it if not, and turn on, the, turn on the camera application, then start filming. This breaks it down into like a three-step process that's just pull it out of your pocket and shoot. And I feel like that's one of the major strengths of this camera. A couple of things I wanted to address just before I wrap things up is you don't need a super expensive memory card in order to shoot 4K footage at 60 frames per second. The one I've been shooting with retails at about 22 bucks on Amazon and it's just a 64 gigabyte V30 card and I'll provide the link to that in the description. I've been reading up online and I've been watching a lot of other videos and a lot of people were asking questions about how does it hold up against the Osmo Mobile 2. That gimbal I usually have with me but I don't have it with me right now because I'm in Hawaii. But that retails at $139 and that pretty much just activates any mobile phone that you have and turns it into a gimbal. But like I said before, the process as to setting that gimbal up, by the time you're done setting up you probably missed a shot already. But this camera that retails at $350 gives you a better chance at snagging those moments that are really important because there are times when things happen and you probably have a split second to decide how you're going to film it and this actually is the solution for it. Like I mentioned before, the Osmo Pocket retails at $350 and for $50 more dollars you could get the GoPro Hero 7. But one of the biggest differences is that the Pocket could actually link up to your phone has that adapter that gives you the larger screen and you can also use selfie mode and it's really more I would say it's more aimed towards vloggers even though you could vlog with the GoPro the biggest market that this camera will be in for is for vloggers someone like myself who's creating videos on a daily and just trying to capture moments um, every opportunity I can this device after playing with it for the past couple of days has definitely been super handy. I feel like it's hard for me to miss a moment if I want to capture it. It's been pretty interesting to use. Like a lot of people have been really intrigued by it. As you noticed in the beginning of the video, people were like, oh wow, you can track my face. Or like, oh wow, look at the size of it. Um, it's just been really fun to play with. 
and it's like a little mini spy cam. Another thing I wanted to talk about was battery life. If you watched the beginning of the video uh, up until the end of the cinematics, I pretty much used one charge, one full charge. By the time I was finished shooting all the content I needed for this video, I had 33% left in the tank. On the website, it describes it as lasting up to 120 minutes. Well, for me at least, after using it the past couple of days, I've been able to shoot a full video with it. So that's just some things to take note of that I really enjoyed is that I didn't have to like constantly charge or even worry about battery. In this case shooting at night was also one of my biggest concerns because especially when you're shooting 4k you can actually see the grain and if you saw towards the beginning of the video there's actually a lot of grain that you noticed but it's not so much to the point where the content is like unusable I think in comparison to shooting with my iPhone I feel like the pocket performed pretty well but I didn't do a specific uh, comparison for this video. Maybe I'll do it on the, on the next one. All in all, I just had a lot of fun creating this video. Um, some of you guys may know that I created an iPhone only series and I'm really interested in mobile videography, mobile photography, um, just because of the form factor and the price. I'm a sole believer that you could shoot with any camera and create amazing content like just like focusing on the story or just focusing on the message that you want to deliver if you watch this until the end and I missed out on a feature or a key thing that you really wanted to know about let me know in the comments and I will try my best to get back to you and help you configure your problem just know that I'm here to help and just know that like whenever a new product or something comes out I'm always trying to get my hands onto it to share with you guys and even though this video was a little late um, I'm really happy to have been able to work with DJI on this huge shout out to DJI uh, for getting me this product to try out in Hawaii it's 11 o'clock at night and we have to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning so it gives me like 6 hours to sleep but then I have to upload this so I'm probably gonna be up for another hour all right well if y'all watch this until the end I appreciate y'all now I'm just rambling um, yeah